Weekly content is back with new theories, a new series, and non-stop videos leading up to Sun and Moon. Starting right now with Why or Why Not, the show that's overgrown with your Pokemon questions and theories. Today I'm answering the question, how did Alolan forms develop? The new Rotom Pokedex has a lot to say about the natural evolution of these Gen 1 favorites, and how, over time, these Pokemon have taken on new typings to adapt to their new biomes. Now when I say evolution, I'm not talking about evolution, the explosion of energy that transforms Pokemon into stronger species. I'm talking evolution by natural selection, how species grow and change over the course of generations. See Birdkeeper Toby's video on the subject. In our world, natural evolution takes millions of years, where Pokemon seem to change forms much quicker. Perhaps this is because Pokemon regularly undergo metamorphosis, which can change their shape, size, and typing instantaneously. Pokemon like Eevee show the incredible potential to adapt to many variant types. Egg moves, attacks known by parents, are guaranteed to pass down after one generation. These Alolan forms show just how fast Pokemon are capable of adapting. The fabulous Alolan Meowth shows how breeding can change a Pokemon's typing, likely because it passed down dark egg moves like foul play and punishment so many times. The volcanic terrain of Alola sent Sandshrew scattering into the icy regions. This fear of magma is directly reflected in Snowshrew being weak to fire moves. Cubone's mother took up fire dancing to ward off grass types. Alolan Vulpix has an interesting story, because it was an introduced species like Gumshoes and Pence. Foxes and Mongooses share the same prey, so if OP GOP Yongoose outhunted Vulpix, a bottleneck phenomenon occurred, so that only the few that could adapt to snow peaks survived. Let's not forget Puka, who evolved to hang some gnarly tents. Finally, Alolan Executor is a shining example of Allen's rule, which states organisms located in warmer climates have longer extremities to expel more body heat. For example, look at the Arctic Hare versus the Desert Jackrabbit. The Arctic Hare wants to stay warmer, so it has a smaller surface area, and in the desert, the Jackrabbit wants to be cooler, so it disperses more heat, like Alolan Executor's long neck. As it left the tropics, Executor wanted to conserve this heat, so it naturally evolved to be shorter. Note that this rule applies to warm-blooded creatures. Pokemon are a bit messy when it comes to temperature control, but there have been examples of other groups that follow this rule. As for what makes Alolan Executor half dragon type, I think the answer is pretty obvious. It's tail. Of the 41 existing dragon types, only two of them do not have tails, Bagon and Shelgon, which evolved to get a tail. Tail equals dragon. Executor has a tail, therefore he's a dragon now. Thanks to my cousin Andrew for helping with a lot of the research in this video. I actually co-host a creative rank podcast with him and our cousin Vic called Genrebot. I'll put a link to it in the description if you're interested. I've been The Alchemist, gotta catch you later.